Hi, Jamie. That's my um, my dinner. Look, there's the puha there, and there's the um, garlics there. That's beautiful garlics, better than the Chinese ones. The Chinese ones are only two dollars ninety or something a kilogram. These ones are twenty nine, thirty bucks a kilo. So they're better for you. And puha, just fresh puha from the swimming pool. I found a little patch over there. Nobody touches it, only me. This was for me. There's heaps of them there. They think them, they're flowers. Uh, so I picked them. And there's big um, cauliflower. I'm going to make white sauce from that. And there's the, the lamb chops at the bottom. There's quite a few lamb chops. It was only $8. And it was $13 for the lamb chops. There they are in the bottom, heaps of them, heaps, heaps of them, and I've got to try and eat most of it, not all of it, but anyway, there's more than enough, and that's half a big pumpkin, and half of a big, that's $2.49, and the pumpkin was $2.49 for a great big one, and the potatoes was cheap, $4 a packet, big packet, that's my dinner, well, little bit of it and just spread it out a little bit okay so that's me and it's a bit cool tonight I'm in my ski suit my ski suit the same suit and with my hat on having a look at my sight here and there that's Maomi in Japan I went to Japan and she went with me and she was in Auckland University learning some things and uh, I'm going to bring them back here to New Zealand, that's my friends, um, Matsumura and his wife and uh, my, uh, Mayumi and me at the back there having dinner, Japanese style. And that's on the acre farms on the on the boat going out to their the acre farms. They've got fourteen families there with their fourteen factories in a cooperative on this island in Isatobi. Uh, so I'm gonna bring them all here to set up a big project with the tidal energy. You need the hydrogen for the freezing for the fish and and um fish and the um, um, freezing of them. You know, that's a better photo. That's Mr. Matsumura in Japan. Mr. Matsumura in Japan contemplates seaweed farms in New Zealand. Looks certain. Now this is our next big economy in the Kumadic Trench East Cape all the way to Tonga with Japanese experts themselves meet up with me again. So, um, <clears throat> that's, uh, oh, I don't know when I went there, uh, quite some time, about 2000, I think, 2000 and, um, not 2000, later than that, about 2005, 2006, I think, somewhere around there. That's them there, we're having dinner, beautiful Japanese dinner, Jamie, look. Oh, yum. Yummy, I'll have it any day. That's the tidal energy turbines. There, it's the project. I went over this with them over there. It's a hydrogen bike, look. It runs on hydrogen. Oh, very tricky, pretty tricky. And that's my little um, show for the day. That's on, on the Acker Farms there, you can see in the background in the sea. And um, they really work hard. And when I came back to New Zealand, I went to the um, uh, studios, the Maori Television, and I put on a cooking show with the seaweeds here. That's um, wakame and uh, sushi. Um, I brought back with me. And I took some of ours there from the East Coast. They said they want the whole lot. It was the best quality. I had it tested by the Koreans and the um, sushi seaweed at the 
East Cape is better than any other seaweed in the world with quality and we don't have enough of it. The, the, the government here wrecked the whole lot. They wrecked the whole rivers and, and flooded the whole seabed out and covered the rocks with mud and slush from cutting the forest down for the timber and they're going to get a big bill for that. This is the factory of the 14 um, cooperatives in the seaweed aqua farms, Isotobi Fisheries. Uh, these people here uh, I'll bring to the east coast and um, we'll uh, get on with it. That's Japan. Me going around Japan. And there's um, Catherine and uh, Ashley helping me to cook um, uh, with um, my friend um, uh, what's his name? Oh, I forgot what his name now. Hey, it. What about it? Um, anyway, that's my friends in uh, Mount Eden giving us a hand at the television station to cook, cook the seaweeds because they know a little bit about Japanese foods and and that. But uh, however, uh, Ma Fre Fred, uh, Fred, oh, I forgot now, Fred. Oh, I forget, I might remember. It's um, Maomi, and they, that's, a, that's a sushi machine. Sushi machine, that's the aqua farms there. And we went to all of this and um, showed me how it works. They gave me the instructions how to do it, that's wakami. Seaweed, beautiful miso soup. He's got that in it, and, and uh, uh, that's the best stuff you know, dried out there. Yeah. And there's the, the seaweed farms that hauling in the nets go straight over the top of the boat and um, they mow it off like a, a, a motor mower, a hand reel mower, and cut the seaweed off the net. It's on nets. That's over there, getting happy. And it's a, this is a cooker, um, I think it's a strainer and takes all the little stones and stuff out of, like a washing machine, out of the um, seaweed, cleans, cleans the seaweed, not cook it, cleans the seaweed. Um, as you can see the nets there in the sea, seaweed. This is uh, Sushi ja, uh, Jamie, there's the net going over the boat there. It goes up and down the rows like like uh, like mussel farms, and they go underneath underneath the and the sea and the net goes over the boat and then they cut it off, cut 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 the thing off like that, like a real mower, and the seaweed falls into the uh, boat bottom of the boat. There's the machines. They got a new one there. I think it was two million dollars for a total machine um, equipment. So we'll do the same here and set them all up at the East Cape. And all the, the, the seaweed has to be um, cultivated. Expensive sushi machines in 14 seaweed factories, Japan. On my field trip around Japan, fisheries factories and open sea seaweed aqua farms. Extensive six-year program to mass produce and cultivate in New Zealand. This is an operation that can only happen with massive power generation, use of force, fast grow the highest grade seaweeds on the Moai tidal bridge platforms, self power refrigeration key to success. That's what I'm saying about those big turbines I, I built for this, for, especially for this um, this project. Oh, that's my girls. Yeah, they're big girls now. Yeah, big girls. Old Ashley, there's Ashley. They're going now. Ashley's going to um, Netherlands, and Catherine over there. This Catherine, she's in London now, and that's her cousins, and she's living in in uh, that's Ashley. Um, I miss them when they go, and there I am, mechanic in Tokoroa, 
fixing vehicles in, in my spare time. And um, that's, I built this big 12 seater, six door um, stretch limousine and um, putting all these, um, there's I think about 40 of these into the cars if they're passengers and then working the brake test with the Ministry of Transport to get its certification. So I built that and designed it myself uh, with another engineer um, and and there's um, the kids' mum's sisters there. Um, mm, they used to love having them around for dinner and that's, um, uh, oh I forget her name now. Um, Anyway, she was uh, Miss New Zealand. <coughs> uh, and Sue Nakori and her husband, Noel. Uh, Sue Nakori. And that's my jumbo jet over there. See? It's coming. Without a dream. That's Lana Cockroft. Lana Cockroft. I used to carry around in those limousines. Um, I had four of them. That's me and my, my jumbo jet. Jamie, I'm having a little practice run and when I get one. Beards were in then, but beards are out for me now. Alright, I was in my real element there. I had all the models in my car. Only because they could get me any time I want. That's on the way to America. I lived in Mangarin house, big house there I had in that time. And there's a car. Tell me how you like that. You like that car? And what about that fella? Um, that's why I'm going to the gym. That's why I'm going in the pool. I did my laps today. I think I lost count how many I did today. I think I only did 20 laps with one, one way underwater all the way with one breath. Only one. I only did one because I'm getting fat. 90.4 kgs is too much. And that's a young buck. I think that was high school. Fakatane High School. There, right there. Jamie? Fakatane High School, right there. I was about 15. Ashley. Catherine. And there's, um, there's Aruni. Aruni Adiapong. is my Thai wife. And my last wife, she's very good. She worked in um, um, Sky Tower. I don't know if she's still there, I think she went back to Thailand. But if you can see this video, um, uh, give me a call. Um, Jimmy, that's her name, Jimmy. Give me a call, and Catherine, that's Catherine. We used to love her cooking, Thai cooking. Between Thai cooking and Japan cooking, I really love, and this, I used to make lots of jokes about Catherine in the, in this box, in the box, it said Fido, or, oh no, I think Richard was in the Fido box, yeah, and yeah, suddenly, she's a really nice woman, she really can cook, she was a cook in the Sky Tower, in the restaurant up there, might have been the top one, but the bottom one she was working in, when, we were living in town. And that's actually. And that's me in America. Um, I think about 1996. Yeah, um, 1996. Four. 11 years ago. That's 11 years ago. And that's three years ago. That's the Ranfilly Bank is right out out in the ocean here, out that way. Ran through the bank where we want to put the aquifers way out of nowhere near where everybody wants to be. But the Japanese themselves told me to go out there because the kingfish go past there. They fatten up over here. When they leave Japan they're only skinny and they said the best place to catch them was out here. And they'll be happy to catch them on a line than to net them. They'll catch them on a the line. This is the East Cape 
on the Maringaro Tito block, way after that block. It's all boggy over here. It's only the, a, a tsunami will come in and clean this right out and make it see come back in here again if we don't watch it. And there's nobody with a budget big enough to fix that up because it's all swampy. This, this is sea level's only a meter above sea level there and it'll just gouge that right out. Already the grave site on the end here has gone into the sea right on the end here. It's the worst place to put a grave site and that's not our family that did that. That's the goldsmiths families that put their, their um, grave site there. We, we won't put them there. Ours is on the hill right back, on the top of the hill. <coughs> anyway, that's all I want to say. And um, that's our my idea. Okay, that's all. Bye. See ya. Have a nice evening. And we'll catch you again. I had my good run-in at the gym today. Pushed a few weights. Anyway, I'm getting sick of writing it all down all the time. And videoing it. We'll see you later. Eh? Bye. Have a nice weekend.